Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. I'm going to go back to my love of trying to do some acrylic fluid art with intention. Uh, I had a big butterfly that I did probably a year and a half or so ago, maybe two years ago. And um, people still always go back to that video and love it. And I'm not going to do a giant one, but I thought I would do a garden inspired one with smaller butterflies. That's my hope to do anyway. Uh, so I'm going to do a swipe and not so sure color wise how I want to go with this. I'm just going to wing it. I've got all my paints that are pre-mixed and they're older. They've got either OGX or silicone in them and they've been combined into my squeeze bottles which I love these bottles and you can find them on the Amazon link below the video. They have a small opening. So anything that comes out of these bottles is going to be smaller cells. It's more controlled pouring. Um, I didn't really want giant cells. If I wanted large cells I would have pre-mixed my paints and cups and done fresh pours or you know the mixture but I'm just using older paints, so it's going to be smaller cells. I'm totally fine with that. I just kind of want a garden effect, and then I want to add some butterflies. That's my plan. So, um, I'm going to show you just the one color that I'm going to mix up. I mixed up my own color. It was a, kind of a turquoise blue. I added some white to it and a little bit of purple, so it's kind of like a periwinkle blue. Uh, it's more blue than purple, obviously, because I want that to represent the sky. And then I just do a one-to-one -one ratio. This is craft bottle paint. I used maybe a couple of different brands. I don't even pay attention. I just use a little bit of everything. The only ones I do not care for are Apple Barrel, and I don't know if these are Apple Barrel or not. Because sometimes I have paints that I picked up at Walmart, and the only ones you can find there traditionally are apple barrel but I you know I love to use deco art mostly and craft bottle paints so the the good thing about craft bottle paints is you t you don't really have to add water but I do want to add a little water to this because I want them to be it to be just a little more fluid than the other colors so that I get some nice cells hopefully going on I got my torch in case I need it and a straw in case I need to blow. Got my my uh, very valuable store card for swiping. Key. I love it. And then my little oval palette knife I get from Jerry's Artorama online. This is my favorite palette knife to use for any kind of controlled swipes. So I'm not going to put silicone or OGX in the swipe color, but it is in all the other colors. And I'm going to add just a little bit of water because I do want it to be just a little bit more fluid than the rest of the colors. Now, it's funny, the other day I heard someone that was swiping. She wanted her white thicker than the others so it would create good cells and I kind of think of it in the opposite way so um, you know I'm not a scientist I'm just an artist I do have some white on standby in case I decide I want to mix a little white in and I may but I want a significant amount of blue at the top uh, so that it looks kind of like sky. I don't want a lot of cells or colors popping through at the top. So that's, I've got this, uh, this I think a five ounce cup of paint. But I am going to start layering colors. And I think I'm going to start just with a little white kind of thrown in up here at the top. This is a 16 by 20 canvas. I have push pins on the bottom. And then I'm going to start, I'm going to put in some flower colors and then greens for the bottom. And so I've got multiple colors here. I've got like a hot pink. These are, a lot of these are self-mixed. Uh, kind of a violet pink, a bright neon 
carousel pink, a peller pink, a kind of a what I call prism violet. It's a red violet and then a deep dioxazine purple. So I've got a little bit of combinations of everything. And so I think I'll go, I have not used some of these in a while. So I'm just going to take the lid off and just go freestyle. Sometimes it's just fun to let loose. I don't necessarily uh, expect any kind of a certain pattern to come up. I'm just very randomly going to put colors here. This is the palest color and I'm just going to intermingle it. Like I said, these are older. They've been sitting for a while. This is the uh, carousel pink, which is a little bit more like a neon. It's not neon, but it's more of a hot pink, deeper pink. I'll throw in another strip of purple here. See, and, and when your colors have sat for a while, you really have no idea how they're going to really respond. I'm going to throw a strip of this violet purple there. Okay, and that pretty much, maybe one more of the hot pink. And I could even throw in another little striped white if I wanted to. But now I want to do what's going to be considered leafier, grassy colors. So I've got my really deep kind of phthalo green, uh, what I call peacock green. And if you have some blockage, just shake it or use a toothpick for these smaller nozzled bottles. You can, you can clean them out really kind of simply. This, it can be so random. It, it really doesn't matter. I'll even throw in some yellow. So you don't have to really worry so much about the color down here because you're going to be swiping off that color anyway. So I'm going to scoot some of this stuff out of the way. You can also tilt a little bit if you need to to just take it over your edges a bit. This is also why I like to use puppy pads as they're easier to dispose of. I have some people that, you know, don't like the fact that I don't recycle stuff. Um, but I do actually save a lot of my paint skins for jewelry making, that kind of stuff. So I'm just kind of making sure I've got paint on the sides and I don't care if it's kind of intermingled, but you know, you want kind of the color that is on the top of the canvas to be on the side in the appropriate area. That just helps, you know, a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to basically swipe this color across everything. Typically I swipe with white or black, so I'm just doing it a little different this time. 
And then of course after you do this it's key that you have a very level surface that you dry it on because otherwise your beautiful swipe will all tilt away and then you'll be really kind of upset. And I'm letting some of this drift down a bit. I'm going to go back down here and just fill in a few blanks just because I don't want a dry spot on the canvas to hold up the movement of paint. I always just stick a little white down here just to make it wet. Okay, so like I said, I want this up here to be totally blue. I don't want really cells coming through, so that's why I'm not worried about it being all the way up to the top yet. So I've got my damp paper towel, and I'm stretching it across. And when you swipe, you need to make sure you don't have anything on either side of your canvas that's going to hold your hands up and knock you or anything. So you want to make sure you're, you're clear to go. I lay down a couple of inches at the most, and I'll leave it right like that. And then drag very gently and fairly slowly. So you're really just dragging that blue across the whole surface. And then I'll let it fall over the edge at the very end all by itself. That ensures that you have paint on the end of your canvas down here. So even though this paint has sat in bottles probably at least a year, literally. Look at those cells. So now I'm just going to come back up here and fill in the blue a little bit. And it got down to the canvas just a little bit here on the edge, so I'm just adding some paint back. And I can kind of dab it with my finger. It doesn't, I don't worry about it looking perfect like I used to. <laughs> I mean, I, I like it to look good to a certain extent, but I'm not a perfectionist like I used to be. I, I've tried to let go and just embrace the moment and enjoy it. Not be so hard on myself. There's too much other stuff in life that is hard on you. You don't need to be hard on yourself about painting. You need to enjoy it. Okay, we're going to just try the torch, but really my colors kind of started about right here. It helped a little bit, not a whole lot. The other thing I can do is let it slightly tilt back up. Do you want the weight of the paint to kind of uh, adjust as you go? That gives it almost a little bit more of a leafy look, which is good. I'm going to take some of this blue and just dab it right here. I always clean my finger off before retouching a different area of the canvas where it might be a different color. So then I'm just going to put just a little bit more blue right here because it's the, the top of the painting. There's a method to my madness here. Y'all just hold on, and I'll show you. And I hope it works. This paint, I may should have not added water, because what happens is if you put colors on top of it, it can sometimes um, 
make them kind of bleed out like um, dendrites or fractals and that's not the look I'm going for. Okay, so I'm going to try to blow through and see if I can get any of these shapes to come up. So this is what I wanted. I wanted it to look a little bit like flowers. So, you know, I might want some to go up and some down, who knows, but... So pretty much what I wanted. The only thing is this one doesn't have a lot of, um, of that hot pink color. So I'm going to add a little violet and the magenta color. And um, you're kind of controlling the shape in a way, you know, just a little bit. And then I'm going to just take my limey green and kind of make some stems, kind of. And then I can, that was the lima green. These are deco art. Usually most of them are deco art colors. So this is festive green, which is my medium colored green. The lighter green was uh, sour apple, which is a really limey green. And I used a primary yellow. I used a carousel pink and deep magenta. Um, kind of a prism violet. Dioxazine purple. Like I said, the blue was kind of a turquoise blue and I added a little bit of purple to it and white to make this purpley blue color. It's not like totally pale blue. I got it stopped up here. Just gotta find a toothpick. This is always fun to come back to this. I haven't done it in a while, and I really miss my, um, you know, more controlled pour paintings. Even though I do love to do, like, dirty pours and tree rings and, you know, things like that. And I've been working my butt off trying to do the Sheely Art Bloom style. Uh, she's from Australia, and I love... I absolutely adore her blooms and I took her course so I've been working on that a lot and so you get kind of sidetracked and you know swiping is kind of my love 
anything that's controlled because I've been an artist for 20 years. I love to paint animals and nature and birds and uh, I've, you know, I've done it for a long time and I used to do murals and all kinds of things like that so um, you know I want people to see that I can do other things besides just dirty pores. I'm not putting a dark green on all the, of them but I've got I think I got two strands that I didn't put it on that's okay. So these feel like flowers but what I wanted to really do was do a couple of butterflies but I'm going to do them small scale because I wanted the garden kind of feel. Now I'm just trying to decide like here where these odd shapes are. I do I think want to blow out just a bit. You can kind of manipulate your cells by breaking the surface of the blue paint. So it just gives more interest to those areas. Adds a little background. And if you don't like something, I lift it out. I don't keep it. You don't, you don't have to live with what you got. You can always manipulate. I'm going to put a little blue back here and leave it. Okay, so now I want to do a few butterflies. I have no idea if this is going to work. In my head it's going to work, but in the actuality, who knows if it will work. I'm just... And if you see something you like in my videos, I also reopened my Etsy shop. I had not opened it in a couple of years. And while I'm talking, I'll just do a few little things here. Um, I decided to reopen it and I've actually sold several things because uh, I do have my artwork here and there and I, I have hundreds of paintings that I've painted that are not on there but I do have some listed so if you're interested this is really pretty where the periwinkle bluish purple and pinks comes into the greens down here I'm just going to slightly do this with my palette knife. I don't, want to, I don't want to really mess up much of the cell action going on underneath so I'm just kind of swiping here and there and that just gives a little interest. The good thing about this kind of technique is it's not as thick as your traditional pores are, believe it or not. And uh, you know this typically will dry and 24 hours when it's more controlled. All right, so to the butterflies we go. So my plan is to swipe with my card. So I'm going to do, how do I want to do this? I really have no idea. I'm just going to wing it here. Wing it, and that is a pun, a play on words for what I'm getting ready to do, which is the butterflies. So that was primary red and orange. This is true ochre, which is a golden yellow. And then my primary yellow. Okay. And let's throw in a little line of white. And I want to swipe with black. Okay, so this is going to be tricky. Who knows? We're going to give it a shot. I'm going to angle my canvas slightly. Make sure you're still in the picture frame there. And it's sunk into the blue, so my blue is probably way too wet. 
it is very wet. Okay, so that's not too bad. I'm going to do another wing. These are going to be like, they're going to be side views of butterflies is what it's going to be. So I'm going to do another wing, a little bit shorter. And I'm doing less paint than the last one because I want more yellow, golden yellow. I want more of them than I do anything else. And then I'm swiping with black, so I'm going to put it right above the red. My card is cleaned off. I always clean it off. I'm grabbing just the black part. And the paint is thick, so it's, it's really kind of bringing the shapes kind of out of whack. Not sure if it looks like a butterfly, but oh well. I'm giving it a try. So we'll, we'll do, um, yeah, I'll just do, I'll do one coming this way. Orange. Gold. A good amount of yellow. And a little bit of white. And then black for the swiping color. I'm kind of coming up and down. Barely touching the surface of the paint. So yeah, I got my blue a little too wet, but I meant for that to be shorter. I'm going to bring that in a little bit. A little bit of orange. And if you have drips, just lift them out with your finger. But always clean your fingers, your cards, your swiping with anything. You don't want to dirty up the next thing that happens. So. So do I want a full one over here or sideways? I really want one perched on a flower. So I'm going to do one. Drip, drip, drip. Some cool cells going on there. I'm not going to even put white on the bottom wing. So make your paint a little thicker. Don't add water to it if you want to try this. So anyway, they kind of they kind of look like butterflies, kind of not. Put a little butterfly body here. And you can take this is a you know, palette knife that you have to wipe off every time you use it or you will put that black into your blue paint and dirty it up. 
course my black does not have silicone in it either and it's sinking but you know you can re-add it and you can you can also wait till it dries and you can fine-tune things I can come when it's dried I can come back around and fine-tune a little bit of these wings if I want to so that's a, a great possibility So hey, it was worth a try. The swipe was fun. The butterflies, not so beautiful, but hey, it is what it is. I'll straighten them up when it dries. I'll repaint some black in. I'm pretty content with this. Add a little deeper green down here where I've got some bright yellow spots. Do I want to swipe up? If I do it may change it to mud so I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to take some of this deep green. Take deep green right off the puppy pad. And just lightly skim that surface. And it just will kind of add it in. That makes me want to try something else here. Um, I'm going to bring this up for you. Pretty cool. Didn't turn out perfect. Fluid art typically does not. Okay, so I'm at my messy table here, but I wanted to show you um, the results of this swipe. Uh, it dried pretty good. I'm going to come back and embellish this. So there will be a future video embellishing this painting. I'm going to add more leafy looking things. I'm going to outline my flowers with the white ultra fine tip writer that I like to use and I wanted to show you the butterflies I'm going to definitely define the butterflies with um, brushes and I stuck my finger right there it was still not quite dry right there and right here in the middle where it's a little bit shiny but I wanted to show you that the cracking in the blue and the reason there's cracking is because I did not use my traditional artist loft white which is what I typically use in all my pores from Michaels comes in a quart it goes a long long way I used apple barrel from Walmart I went back and looked at the bottle and I never like to use apple barrel it always cracks and I had never had that issue with any of my other brands of paint so I would stay away from Apple Barrel it's cheap and it cracks but anyway I'm gonna have to touch up do something with the sky and I'm gonna define the butterflies give the flowers a little bit more shape and add some leaves and then this one will be done and ready so I just wanted to show you I poured this off camera and I just wanted to show you I've been on an angel kick and I've done about nine angels and I've got an order for this one and another one coming up I've got to go buy a round canvas to do that one uh, I've been getting these on they're about a half an inch thick it's MDF it is man it's a medium density hardboard that is man-made but it does not warp and that's what I love about it and I don't have to prep it and you don't have to worry about wood grain popping through you don't have to worry about it getting fuzzy feeling like typical wood does when you paint it the first time 
So I love MDF. The only thing is I have to sand my edges a little bit because they feel a little bit rough and I usually sand them. And with these gold, uh, the angels and the gold accents, I usually rub gold on the edges anyway. But I wanted to show you that there was some cracking that happened. And um, just like my other swipe painting that I just did recently, I used Apple Barrel White from Walmart in that color mixture. And it always cracks with the Floetrol recipe. Ne uh, my Artist Loft White never cracks. So again, I do not like Apple Barrel. It's cheap and it cracks and it's from Walmart and I do not recommend it. So I would do a painting with this where I'm using it with a brush but not in Fluid Art. I do not like Apple Barrel products in Fluid Art. So I just wanted to make that note for you. Thank you. So I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please share with your friends. I can always use subscribers to follow me. I want to keep on inspiring people to create art. If you're a subscriber, click on the bell on the bottom right to get notifications. Check all the links below the video. There's all kinds of good stuff there. And I will see you on the next video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.